Love, 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 just a little bit of love. Love, 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 just a little bit of love. You don't need a lot, just use what you got. Love, 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 just a little bit of love. It's that time of year when the teachers look back over the past nine months and kind of review what we accomplished or what we hoped we accomplished. And I can tell you that we are very, very blessed. I should hear a very loud amen. amen. The Lord blessed us with every single one of these students. He has sent each one here to learn and to live and to share his love with those around him. And I think that they do a, a pretty good job. And I know that I'm proud of them, and you should be too. Our offering today is to help fund our scholarship program and without that program, there are many of these students who would not be here. But as you can see, it's well worth the investment. Amen. So besides your tithes and your offerings, we would ask that you would remember that fund today. Um, deacons, if you would plan, please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given us this year in the form of students, in the form of parents, and in the form of church members that support their growth and their education. Lord, these children are here for you. We're all here for you. And we ask that you would use us in the way that you see fit. Bless these tithes and offerings now. May they go to your glory. And may we have an excellent Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen. As the children play this praise song, we would ask that you would join them in song. Good morning. Buenos dias. Come on, you can say it. Buenos dias. I am happy to see you today, and I am going to tell you all about Molly. Molly was a very pretty little girl, and guess what? Molly knew she was very pretty. Molly was a very smart little girl, and guess what? Molly knew she was smart. Okay. Molly had very pretty clothes, and guess what? 
Molly knew she had very pretty clothes. Have you ever met somebody like that? Have you ever met somebody like Molly that thought about Molly an awful lot? Well, Mommy and Daddy were very worried about Molly because Molly thought about Molly. She didn't think about anybody else. She just thought about Molly. In fact, they didn't know what to do with Molly. If Molly wanted the biggest cookie, guess who got the biggest cookie? If Molly wanted the last piece of candy, guess who got the last piece of candy? Oh, Molly, Molly, Molly. Now, Molly's mommy and daddy lived a long, long, long way from here. They lived way over across the world in Vietnam. And um, they loved Molly very much. Now, mommy and daddy had a lot of money, so they, they were quite, quite rich. And because Molly was the only little girl they had, they had no boys. They only had, what was her name? Molly. Well, because of that, they did everything they could do to make Molly feel good about herself and to, to let her know that they loved her. And it got to the point where what Molly wanted, Molly got. The problem was that Molly became very self-centered. Who knows what that word means? Self-centered. Caden. Yes, yeah, selfish. Thinking about herself, right? Have you ever met anybody like that? I'm sure you were never like that, though. Well, let me tell you about the school that Molly went to. Mommy and Daddy sent her to a very, very special school. It was a school for children who were very, very smart and who had a lot of money. And listen to this. Every day, a car drove up in front of Molly's house. And the driver got out and opened the door and said, is Molly here? And Molly would go and get in the car and sit down and guess where that car went? To the school. And when they got to the school, the driver got out and he opened up that back door. And what did Molly do? She did. And she went into the school and the car drove away. At that school, Molly learned to sing and to play the guitar and she learned arithmetic, and she learned reading and how to write. But there's one thing she didn't learn. She did not learn to think about other people. Well, the teachers were worried. Mommy and Daddy were worried. But one day, Mommy said, tomorrow's your birthday, Molly. And she went and got Molly the biggest cake Molly had ever seen. And it was a beautiful cake. It was flowers on top and big icing, and it said, Happy Birthday, Molly. And when the big black car came, boys and girls, the next day, and the driver got out, he took that great big cake, and he put it in the trunk, and when he got to the school, he gave it to the teachers, and guess what they did with it? They put it in the refrigerator. Well, everybody was going to enjoy this cake for lunch. Have you guys ever done that at school? Of course you have. Well, you haven't done this. Right before lunch, everybody in that school was supposed to take a nap. And so they'd go over and they'd pick up their little mats and they'd lay them down and they'd get on that and they'd take a quick nap and then they would have lunch. Well, everybody went and got their mats. And they lay down and they all went to sleep except for, oh, Molly was mad. Oh, Molly was furious. She was so mad that the teachers had taken her cake and put it away because she said, it's my cake. It's nobody else's cake. That's my cake. And they took my cake, and they're all going to eat it. And she got madder and madder and madder. And finally, very quietly, and boys and girls, this is a true story because Molly told me the story herself. She got up off her mat. And she went over to the refrigerator, and she opened the refrigerator door, and she stuck her head in the refrigerator and licked all the frosting off the top of the cake. Yuck! What would you do? What would you do? Would you want to eat that cake? No. She licked every bit of it, and she looked around like this. Nobody was watching. So she, you know what she did then? She started on the sides of the cake. 
So she had licked all the frosting off the, the whole thing. It was a big cake. And all of a sudden, how dare they take my cake and not give it to me? I don't have to share my cake with anybody. It's mine, and it's my birthday. Oh, Torsten, I don't know about this girl. Well, all of a sudden, the teacher said, Molly! The teachers had been across the room. They looked, and they said, Molly, what are you doing? And she turned around, and she stomped her feet, and she said, It's my cake, not yours. I'm not sharing my cake with anybody. And I ate all the frosting off the cake. Well, there was a lot. And the boys and girls were so sad. They didn't get any cake. And the teachers were like, oh, my goodness, what do we do now? And Molly was just standing there like this. Well, guess what? Do you think there was a party that day in honor of Molly? No party. Do you think anybody else wanted to eat that cake? No cake. The teachers called Mommy and Daddy and said, you need to come and get Molly. So they did. And Molly had to go sit in the principal's office until Daddy and Mommy got there. You know, Molly had a, had a heart. To, Molly did not know Jesus. Molly did not know that Jesus says, love one another and be kind to one another and, and do what Jesus wants you to do. And it took Molly a long, and Molly told me this. Do you know where Molly lives now? She lives right here in Washougal. And Molly said to me, Linda, Tia Linda, she doesn't call me Tia Linda. She said, it took me a long time to realize that others come before me. Nobody had ever taught me that before. Nobody ever told me that you should not be selfish. I thought everybody was supposed to be that way. Now, is that the way Jesus wants us to be, boys and girls? Well, pastor's going to talk about only a boy named David today. You know that song? What did David do with, the Goli with Goliath? Yes, because Jesus helped him, didn't he? Okay, now listen carefully to the pastor's sermon. And I have enough, I think, for all of you. David had a best friend. I want to see if you can find out who that best friend was. And I want you to see, Jesus said that David had a heart like his. Now, did Molly have a heart like Jesus's? No. But David did since the time he was a little boy. So I have some sheets of paper for you guys. Now, listen carefully. There are three questions. I want you to figure out three ways that Mommy's going to have to help you and Daddy. Three ways that um, David had a heart like Jesus. And then you can color the picture. When you bring it back to me and you can tell me who David's best friend was, it's all on this sheet. When you bring it back to me, I'll have something for you at the end of the service, okay? So stop by me on your way up. And remember, is Molly's way the best way? Is Jesus' way the best way? Yes. Isaiah 64, 8. I'm reading out of the New International Version. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. me and kneeling for prayer.
Dear Jesus, oh. help us to follow your ways. Help our songs to praise you. Thank you for the beautiful day. We love you. Amen. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for our families and friends. Please be with the people that are sick and not here today. Please bless the students and teachers. Amen. <laughs>
on behalf of the school, I want to introduce you to an amazing lady. If you don't already know her, this is Nadine Sample. Miss Sample to these kids. And we have been so lucky to have her be part of our school for the last two years. She has volunteered her time three days a week. She comes and she teaches these students. And let me tell you, this lady gets results. If you've ever been to a Christmas program, the results that she gets from our kids is just really amazing. She is so disciplined with them, so structured, and they, they, they get results from it. And we are so grateful for the time that you have spent, and we're going to miss you. So I'm going to pass the mic to her and let her tell you about her adventures. She's leaving us for about six months. And um, we're really excited to hear where she's going. So will you tell us? But I'm only going to go if I can come back and have these kids back Please. again. Okay. That's All right. Deal. <laughs> All right. Um, Ruth, would you please come up here? This lady who's walking up here is Ruth Millard. She is the one who originally went to Borneo and started the orchestra. She arranges almost all of the music that the orchestra plays. Without this woman, the orchestra wouldn't happen over there. Um, she's at my house this weekend, and we've been working on repairing clarinets uh, to take over to Borneo. Anyway, there is a, a secondary and elementary school there in Borneo. And um, I am going over there to help with the orchestra. And by God's grace and help, I am going to give a, a cooking school over there, which is just so needed. The, the people's health is just horrible over there. And although I don't have a lot of knowledge, uh, I'm just going to try to share what I do know and ask God to bless. Um, and we're also going to work on trying to help the elementary uh, teachers learn how to teach the way I teach. <laughs> um, be that good or bad, but um, I, I would just really ask this congregation to lift me in prayer while I'm over there, that God's will will be done and that uh, things that are shared will have the Holy Spirit's blessing. I want to tell you just a little bit more about Nadine's involvement in Saba Adventist Secondary School in, in uh, Tamperuli, Malaysia. I, I got there also by God's leading as a great surprise. I never would have picked a hot tropical country when I retired. And when I got there, they had been praying for somebody to come from the United States or Australia or Canada since the mid 80s to do an orchestra. And it took until 2009 <laughs> for God to answer that prayer. And as I was there, it was a wonderful experience, very musical, did very well. But I knew I had to come back to the United States for six months. As it turned out, it was longer than that. And I needed somebody to come, and I tried. I'd talk to this person and that person, called some colleges. And then in my mind, it came back to somebody that I had gone to school with in the early 1960s and I hadn't seen since 1964. And that was Nadine Sample. And God put it on my mind and then he laid it on her heart. And I had fun. Well, God bless you. 